As we turn now to Pakistan, millions of people continue to suffer one month after the torrential rains triggered floods that submerged one-fifth of the country underwater. But even as the disaster grips the country, the Obama administration's drone war in northwest Pakistan is continuing. There have been at least nine drone attacks this month, the latest killing five people in North Waziristan Sunday. The United States has carried out at least 63 drone strikes inside Pakistan this year, killing an unknown number of civilians. Half a world away at the Creech Air Force Base in Indian Springs, Nevada, is one of several homes of the American military's aerial drone program in Pakistan and Afghanistan. Well, this week will mark the beginning of a trial for 14 anti-war activists who held a 10-day vigil outside Creech Air Force Base last year. They were charged with criminal trespassing for entering the base with a letter describing their opposition to the drone program. For more on the trial, we're going to Nevada now. And we're being joined by one of those on trial, Kathy Kelly. Uh, she's been nominated several times for the Nobel Peace Prize. She's coordinator of Voices for Creative Nonviolence. Kathy, welcome to Democracy Now! Thank you for joining us by Democracy Now! video stream. Why did you protest at Creech? Well, we vigiled and protested at Creech because we believed it was very important to call attention to the fact that the United States is at an alarming rate moving into robotic warfare, kind of a mission creep that could lead us into perpetual war. There's so little accountability. There's so little information made available. And yet, uh, as you mentioned, children are among those who are being killed. And this is happening with such regularity in Pakistan and Afghanistan. So we believe that we didn't commit civil disobedience this time. Really, the 14 of us who go on trial and who have expert witnesses like uh, Bill Quigley and Ramsey Clark and Colonel Ann Wright believe that we were exercising our obligations under international law. It's clear that targeted assassinations, these arbitrary killings, extrajudicial killings, are not allowed, and that citizens have a duty, a responsibility to prevent it. Can you describe exactly what you did, Kathy? Well, we vigil for 10 days. I mean, the morning newspaper, the day that we entered the base, reported that we were going to do that. And so I don't think it could have been a tremendous surprise. But as soon as we uh, stepped onto the base, uh, soldiers were very frightened. Uh, two of them kind of clicked their guns. And so when they said, stop, we did. And then we remained. We had carried with us uh, several letters. We had a letter that we wanted to circulate to base personnel and to Colonel Chambliss, uh, indicating that we all share this responsibility to try to prevent the uh, buildup of drone warfare and the killings that are happening so regularly. Um, we had bread and water, and we uh, would have liked very much to have a chance to talk with the base personnel. Uh, but after about an hour, we were arrested and uh, taken into custody. The charges were dropped. And then they were reinstated. So this may indicate that there's a desire to create a deterrent. There certainly is a constant construction. Our friends at the Nevada Desert Experience tell us that uh, the cement trucks are arriving every day, and this base is being turned into a top security base. And uh, it should be noted, I think, that in uh, Ellsworth, South Dakota, White Men, Missouri, those bases are now developing the technology so that drone attacks can be operated by people inside of those bases. And also, of course, at uh, Hancock Field, where people in Syracuse are demonstrating on a daily basis. You know, I wanted to bring in another guest into this discussion. Um, as I was saying earlier, it's been over.